everyone. Welcome back to another one of our Mortgage Minute updates. I am super excited to have my good buddy here, Corey Martins, with me. And hey. Corey, you guys, if those of you who watch these videos, you've seen Corey for the last, I don't know, how year and a half that we've done these. He is one of my go-to lenders and one of my, my greatest supporters and cheerleaders. And man, this guy's just, I like this guy a lot. So Corey, thank you so much for being here with us today. Oh, thank you. You're too kind. <laughs> <laughs> no, if I want a lender who's going to get it done, I know I have a, a very small mm -hmm. handful of, of partners in my business, then you are definitely you. at the top of that list. So I really appreciate you. So Corey and I uh, wanted to bring mm -hmm. a kind of a timely topic to you guys today. Um, we've been we've been chatting about this for the last little while. And of course, as as partners, he and I brainstorm about, you know, different ways that we can help our mutual clients or our separate clients. It doesn't even matter um, to achieve their their goals right now. And um, since, of course, Corey works in the lending sector, he works mostly with my buyers and not so much my sellers. So this is this is one that's mostly for the buyers today. Um, but we wanted to talk about how how to get ready, how to win in this market. And so Corey came up with three really, really excellent points that we're going to cover and talk about a little bit today. So Corey, go ahead and like give us the background about why you were thinking about this and then throw the first point at us. You bet. Well, you know, it, the market right now, it, anyone that's been out there looking for a home understands that it's hard to get under contract. Yeah. And you're hearing the stories, you know, they're going out, finding a home they love. For day one, they've got seven, eight offers in on it and you're just having a hard time getting getting under contract. Yeah. So, yeah. so it, you know, um, as you know, there, there's little things that we can do to prepare for it. And um, the first one, it's just, it's a mental thing. Yeah. Because, oh. you know, what I discovered real quick, and, and I'm sure you notice this even more than I do, Katie, because you're on the front lines, is that those buyers that were walking in thinking that this is going to be like it was five years ago, they go to the third home and they are exhausted after writing the third offer. They're, they're completely exasperated and, and want to give up. Yeah. And a lot of them do give up, honestly. Like I've had some say, you know, we're just going to extend our lease for another year and we'll come back to this in the year. And I'm thinking, the prices are going to be more expensive and who yeah. knows what interest rates are going to do. And, uh, you know, so, yeah. No, you're, you're absolutely right. You know, and it's, it's scary to, to think of what that could be. But, you know, so, so I'm trying to express to everyone to set the right mental expectation. Expect that you might be putting in 8, 10, 12 offers before yours is taken. Yeah. If you've yeah. got that, you know, if you know where the finish line is and that is way down the road, after having three offers turned down, you're you're not going to be exasperated. You're you're three closer to your yes. It's it's yeah. you know, we, we talk about that a lot in sales. It's like every no just brings you closer to a yes. And so yeah, absolutely, absolutely. But it is it is a mental it's a mental battle right now for, for lots of our clients. And, and you and I have both seen that. Um, in fact, when I go out and do my buyer presentations right now, my buyer consultations, I, I, I really feel bad because a lot of times I bring people to tears, which is so not my personality and not my goal. But I yeah. feel like it's a better kindness to be honest and upfront with mm -hmm. them and lay out the reality of what we're, what we're going in for here than it is to just say, oh yeah, this is going to be so fun. We're going to go out and you're going to have like 20 <laughs> homes to choose from and you get to pick your favorite and you can lay out the terms. And it's just like, ah, that's not how yeah. it is right now. <laughs> it's not, but you know, but we're going to do the best we can. And I, I know that you're good at, at uh, getting your foot in that door when it's needed. Yeah. Yeah. No, we have some really good systems on our team to get our offers accepted, but it is also still really important to, yeah. um, to have that proper mindset, proper expectation. So you don't, you know, quit three feet before you hit gold, you know? Yeah. And, and so I think that's really important, which really leads us into your second point. So throw that one at us. So, so the second one is understanding that it could take a little bit longer than normal. I mean, we'll cross our fingers that you can get your first or second contract done, but when it doesn't, we might have more time. Yeah. And, and every buyer, unless you're a cash buyer willing to pay way over market, you've got a weakness or something that we can improve on. So historically, you know, we'd get you pre-qualified and then we just wait for you to find a home. Right now I'm saying, let's get you pre-qualified 
but keep working on improving your, you know, find your weaknesses and let's make those strengths. Yeah. That on the next offer, you're going to look stronger. And if you don't get that one, the next one, you're going to look even stronger to the point where they, they just can't deny how strong a buyer you are and they want to go with you. Yeah. So I want to give a quick example of this, if I can, Corey, because yeah, oh, absolutely. This is something that is so true. Now, we don't have to do this on all of our offers, but it's becoming very commonplace right now to um, have to make up the difference between the, the purchase offer price, the, the price that we all agreed on, and what our um, appraisal comes in at. Uh, because because the values are going up so quickly and the appraisals always lag behind, there are a lot of times there's a differentiation between that and that. And um, a lot of our sellers are looking for buyers who will walk in and say, you know what, I'm willing to pay the difference between what what it appraises. If it doesn't appraise at value, I'm willing to to make up you know the difference between you know maybe it's an extra thousand dollars cash, maybe it's five thousand dollars cash. Well, when we first start the process, you may not have that ability to do that. But over time, if you're continuing to save money and, and you know, know that you're making this move, then we might have a little bit more towards the end of our, our process, a little more cash to play with. You know, we, or you started at the beginning and you needed some help with your closing costs. And by the time we get to the end, you've saved up enough money to cover all of your closing costs, which makes you a much, much stronger buyer than somebody trying to ask for a closing cost assistance, which really isn't happening in the market right now. No, so, you're, you're exactly right. And when we need to, we can get creative with some of that too. Yeah. I'm, in your scenario, let's not forget, if you've got your down payment and closing costs, but you can't pay, make that gap, Maybe it's time to look at something like down payment assistance to make up the gap. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah you know, it's, it's always about improving so we get stronger and stronger. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And then I love your third point. Like this one just speaks to my heart because, you know, this is, this is what I'm all about. And you, you and I in our many discussions have, have established this kind of a relationship between our businesses. And so mm -hmm. throw the third point out at us. All right, so the third one, and honestly, I, I think it, it does transition from that second one as well, um, but it's making sure that we all work together as a team to fight as hard as we can for our sellers. Yeah. As, you know, previously, you know, yourself, Katie, you are fantastic, and you still, you know, you've always been fighting for those deals and getting the right deal, but now, in being, you know, I always liken you to the quarterback of a team, right? Yeah. At some point you say, hey, do you know what? We got to bring, you know, all of our men forward. We've got to, we've got to push this one harder than we've ever pushed because now we're fighting, you know, against more than what, what we're used to. Yeah. At that point, and when you feel it's appropriate, I love jumping in and helping fight for that deal by calling the um, listing agent myself. Yeah. Okay? And as you know, r right away, if I call the listing agent rather than waiting for them to call me, we've already set ourselves apart. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I love my, and all of my lenders that I choose to work with are very proactive in this for me. And, and Corey, you led the way at the very, very beginning of showing me as a new agent that this was a tool in our arsenal that could very, very uh, effectively be used to getting our offers yeah. accepted. And so having not only, um, I mean, We've, we've accumulated lots of tools in our tool chest for our yeah. buyers over the years, you know, things like love letters for the property. Um, I have a really cool cover sheet letter that introduced my team and how, what they can expect working from us. I always talk up my lenders in that, you know, that you and I have a longstanding relationship and they can depend on the relationship and, and you getting it done. And then to have that next layer where, the client's lender is willing to pick up the phone and call that agent and say, hey, look, either we're sending over an offer or you should have just received an offer. Let me tell you about where they are in this process and how strong they are. Speaks so much more than the piece of paper prequal that I send over that has boxes checked. Right? Exactly. And, and I think that's what a lot of people don't understand is that that prequalification letter is very generic and it does not tell a whole story. It tells a minimum story. Yeah. And when a seller is looking at something, everyone thinks that they're looking for top dollar, but it doesn't matter if you take an offer that's $2,000 more if it doesn't close. Yeah. yeah. They want to know that they got a good offer and that we're going to get it closed. And so, you know, with, with the buyer's permission, I will call up and say, hey, look, you know what? I know that uh, we're only, we've only got 10,000 or 10% down on this deal. 
but let me tell you what we've got in reserves that you, you're not aware of. Yeah. Or, or let me tell you that, you know, it, might, it shows FHA, which you might think is a weak thing, but let me tell you, I, we can go conventional if we need to. The reason we're doing FHA is strategic. And the comfort in that is if something goes wrong, we've got multiple options to go. We're going to get this thing done. Yeah. When I can start to talk to them that way, they start to realize that we're a lot more than what the paper says. Yeah. And I love that you just mentioned that about <clears throat> FHA versus conventional, because in the market that we're in right now, of course, my advice is conventional is going to look the strongest to the sellers, which it is. However, if you can get on the phone and say, hey, look, we can do it conventional if we have to, but this is in my buyer's best interest. And mm -hmm. so if we get to the point where it doesn't appraise or it doesn't, you know, we have some sort of a problem with the FHA, don't worry, we can switch it over, which yeah. alleviates that fear for, for the seller. You know, why, why is this buyer choosing to go FHA rather than conventional in the market that we're in right now? Is it because they're not that well qualified? Is it because they're not very strong? Is it because, you know, there's a lot of pre-assumptions that come with certain things and that's one of them. And so you being able to have that conversation and feel in the holes of that story is huge. It's huge for, for us getting our deals done and for everybody coming to a win-win understanding on both the buy and the sell side. So yeah, I, I think that those three points, Corey, were like, Absolutely stellar. So, um, but you know, it's yeah. it is really important for for buyers to realize that because it's a tough market doesn't mean it's a bad time to buy. No, this means oh my goodness. It no, just means and in fact, us harder for you. Yeah, in fact, let me just tell you right now, and I'm I tell everybody flat out, I do not have a crystal ball. Okay, so this is not Katie predicting the future, but as Katie predicting the future here. This is what I think. <laughs> I think if you're looking to try and win in the real estate game in the next five years, that the person or the people or the clients that are going to win or the investors that are going to win are going to be those who purchase and get as many properties um, in their real estate portfolio between 2020, 2021, and 2022, those three years. Okay, because our housing shortage is most likely not going to be solved, <laughs> fixed for about five more years. So if you if you want to see your your values and if you really want to win in the real estate game, I think for us, the next two years are going to be um, the best times to purchase to win in this market right now. I love it. You're, so, you're absolutely right. Good don't, advice. Don't hold me to that. It's not in writing, but <laughs> that's gospel according to Katie, I guess. <laughs> well, Corey, I want to thank you so much for joining us for this conversation. You bring so much value to our clients, to our mutual clients, to just everybody out there in the marketplace in general. I, I so appreciate right. you. I really appreciate you well, always taking the time to share your, your insights and your wisdoms with us and, and for all you've done for me and my business as well. Well, thank you. And I, I could say the same about you. It's always a delight talking to you and especially working with you. Oh, thank you so much. Okay. So Corey, if people have more questions for you, what is the best way for them to go ahead and get in touch with you? You know, I'm going to give you my cell number, uh, even though it makes it seem like I'm out of state because I've still got an old out of state number. But yeah, my, my, uh, my cell number is 406-314-0962. And that's the one that you can, you can get me at because I'm always at that number. Fantastic. If you didn't catch it fast enough, don't worry about it. Head over to our website, all the way over on the right-hand side where it says more, drop that down. You'll see preferred um, vendors and partners down there under the lenders. Corey's name is absolutely there and all of his contact information is there. So check us out on our website where you can connect with us socially and there's blogs and videos and all kinds of resources for you there at www.living, the number four, the number eight, realestate.com. So living for a realestate.com and you'll be able to find Corey's information there as well. Corey, thank you again for joining us for thank this you. market update and we will catch you all on our next one. All right. See ya.